everybody. Hey, it's uh, 6 o'clock, not Thursday night. It's 6 o'clock on Tuesday night. Uh, happy Giving Tuesday. Uh, thank you to everybody who's uh, donated today to uh, Second Helpings or your favorite charity. We appreciate that. Um, it's, uh, it's an awesome day, uh, our favorite day, one of our favorite days, because we like to thank you, the donors and the volunteers, for everything that you do. So, uh, by the way, my name is Kathy Jones, in case you don't know me. I'm the executive chef at Second Helpings, and uh, it's Cooking with Kathy on a Tuesday night. We are going to do some holiday tapas appetizers uh, that, that you can... Uh, uh, serve around the holidays to your family because um, we know that it's all the crazy time and uh, holiday parties are not occurring this year unless they're virtual so this is something you can make for your virtual holiday party and uh, for your family as well so uh, tonight we're going to do a kind of a, a spin on a cocktail meatball and we're also going to do a different kind of cheese ball uh, I believe that the recipes are on our website um, and they may even be in this feed somewhere or a link to them. So uh, you should be able to find those. Uh, today our theme besides doing some holiday appetizers is uh, what happens one day uh, in the life of Second Helpings? What all do we accomplish one day at Second Helpings and a lot of you that are watching are volunteers and you know how much can happen out there but what I'd like you to do I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it and I want you to share the video with your friends tell them they could go to YouTube later and check it out and we're gonna tell them about what what all happens in one day in the life of Second Helpings so I'm gonna touch on that a little bit as we go through tonight uh, with our cooking um, and as always five dollars feeds a family of four so five dollars feeds a family of four jump on over uh, to secondhelpings.org slash donate uh, and you can donate there also check out our website uh, just go to the website secondhelpings.org there's a lot of cool information on there uh, some uh, updates uh, from Jennifer our CEO there's all kinds of fun stuff over there if you do go to the donate button It'll drop down and there's apparel on there. So it's a great time uh, if, if you want to give your friends that are jealous about uh, your swag that you get. Obviously, it's not going to be the same, but you can send them over there to the apparel store. And 15% of everything that's purchased on the apparel store comes back to us. So uh, that's, that's great Christmas gifts. All right. What's everybody having for dinner tonight? Who's hanging with me? So, um, Cheryl said, happy, thanks. Happy giving Tuesday. Happy giving Tuesday, Cheryl. It's good to uh, see you. So we're going to start out. The first thing we're going to do is the meatballs, uh, takes a little bit longer. So we'll do those and then we'll get them in the oven and then we'll do the, uh, cheese ball. So, um, I'm going to read the recipe because I know I'm really bad about doing this guys. I go off, off script with that. So what we've got here is we've got a pound of ground chuck and a pound of ground pork. I'm going to put that in there. Uh, you, if you like veal, you can split the, the recipe three ways and you can put some veal in there. Uh, it gives it nice texture. So I'm going to uh, mix the pork and the ground beef up just a little bit. And then we'll go right on down the recipe there. Is everybody still eating turkey? Terry and Lou are signing in from Key West. Yes, how's it doing in Key West, you guys? We miss you, but glad you're down there having fun. We're having a Cuban family recipe, oh, picadillo, picadillo yes. for dinner. Man, that sounds good, guys. All right, so all I'm doing is just kind of mixing the two meats together right now. A um, couple of tricks that uh, we're going to go through. We're going to uh, take three cloves of garlic, and I'm just going to smash them. Maybe. There we go. Flew. 
So I'm just going to smash them. And what we're going to do is I've got uh, two cups or a half a quart of water on the stove. We're going to throw the garlic in the water and we're going to bring it up to a boil and let that cook for about five to seven minutes. So then we're gonna strain the garlic out and we're just gonna use the water in the meatballs. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give it a really nice consistency. Um, so the other trick is when you do your egg, you want that egg whipped really, really good when, you, when it goes in there. So again, that's gonna give us that nice, airy, fluffy consistency that we're gonna look for. Amy Patron said, guess what? I just put meatballs in the oven for marinara and meatballs. Awesome. How's it going, Amy? So, so I'm going to go ahead and I am going to uh, put the egg in. I'm reading just to make sure I'm doing everything I'm supposed to the right way. I've got my salt and pepper mix like I always do, so we're just going to do a little salt and pepper in there. And you don't need to go too heavy because we're going to put some Parmesan cheese in there, which will add some salt uh, to, the, to the mixture. Okay, so we've got the meat, the eggs. We're going to put the cheese. So I've got about a half a pound of Parmesan, grated Parmesan. And um, this is just the store-bought kind. You can actually grate it, obviously, if you want to. So we're going to pour that in there. Um, we've got the pepper. We've got the salt. So we're gonna let the garlic boil, water boil. Um, I've got about a half a pound of breadcrumbs here. Eh, a little, give or take a little. So I'm gonna pour, I'm not gonna do all of it because I wanna make sure I get that uh, texture right. Again, recipe's a guideline, guys. So uh, make sure you kind of feel it the way you want it. I like the meatballs, like I said, really airy and fluffy. Um, so we're gonna wait for that garlic to boil. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what happens in a day in the life of Second Helpings. So we send out about 4,000 meals a day, uh, every day at Second Helpings. So in a shift, so a volunteer shift, a four-hour shift, uh, we can prepare about 1,400, 1,500 sandwiches. Um, and actually, if you would... Divide that out into how many people make those sandwiches. Each person can make about 200 sandwiches a day. And I know we have our expert sandwich makers that come in on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And if you're out there watching, I know you guys blow that number out of the water. But one person can make about 200 sandwiches in a four hour shift. So uh, that's, I mean, that's quite a bit. So uh, that's just sandwiches. Then we do our grab and goes, um, which is something really new to all of us. And again, we can rock out about 1,500, 1,600 grab and goes in a four hour shift. So again, depending on how many people we have and how that goes, it, it could add up to about uh, 150 to 200 per person per shift. So one person one day in the life of Second Helpings makes a huge difference, as you can tell. So, what's for dinner, guys? Milford Weeks said he's munching on Thai-inspired tuna spaghetti with peanut sauce. Rock oh. on, chef. Yum. It's good to hear from you, Milford. Hope everything's going well for you. And Sue's, Sue's on. Hey, Sue. Peter Kors. Peter, how's it going? Uh, it's good to hear that not everybody's still eating turkey. So, I'm excited about that. Okay, so the, the garlic is boiling right now. I'm going to let that boil for about, oh, uh, it's been boiling for a couple minutes, so we'll let it go for three, three, about three more minutes again. And then we're going to throw that in here, and we're going to mix this all together. So we're going to strain the garlic out, and we're just going to use the garlic water because we don't want those big chunks uh, of garlic again. Depends on what part of Italy you're from. Not everybody puts a bunch of garlic in their food in, in, in Italy. It just depends on, on what area you're from. So um, we're going to use the flavor of the garlic in the water. Um, cool. So I'm excited about uh, Lou and Terry's uh, Cuban dinner. I'm, ex I'm excited about that. Let me know how it turns out, you guys. Let me know how good it is. So... Um, Hopefully everybody's staying safe down there in Florida. I think all the hurricanes are finally 
done their thing and, and gone away. And hopefully everybody's just staying safe no matter what and all this craziness. So uh, I was excited and sad at the same time that it was December 1st. Excited because that's one day closer to 2020 being over and sad because it's almost over. <laughs> so, um, all right, we're going to let that garlic, uh, it's, it's close. We're going to put that in there in just a minute and then um, we'll make the sauce after that. I have, uh, Holly's going to do double duty tonight. She's going to shoot me questions and roll meatballs at the same time. So, <laughs> Talented. Yeah, she's talented and she's been recruited. Uh, <laughs> Voluntold. <laughs> Voluntold. Yeah, Voluntold. So, um, cool. Um, nobody's talking about dinner tonight. What's, what's up with dinner besides Lou and Terry? Well, and Amy's got meatballs in the oven, so. And Milford. And Milford's got a real, he's rocking it, so. Uh, Sue, so what are you guys eating? Have you been to Liberty lately? I was on their website just looking the other day, <laughs> upset that I, that I missed out this year. Uh, so, we try not to think about it. I was looking at flights for next year. <laughs> Daydreaming. Daydreaming, so. All right. I'm gonna smell this garlic. It's getting there, we want just a little bit more aroma in there so we'll get that going. Um, what's everybody's favorite uh, appetizer for the holidays that you like to serve before COVID when we could have uh, holiday parties? So said every week. Every week. Oh, <laughs> you're killing me, you're killing me. I miss you guys so much, too. Um, the other thing that I need to know what your favorite thing is, and no guarantees, but so next week, I'm actually baking. So I could take the real easy way out and do a sugar cream pie because I have no problems making those whatsoever. But I thought if you guys would shoot me some ideas of what kind of Christmas or holiday baking you like, no promises, but I might try to do it. My mom used to make, she called them Mexican wedding cakes. And we mm. only got those at Christmas time, and I love those. Yeah. And the other things were the um, Chinese New, New Year's cookies. We mm. always got those at, at the holiday time. Terry so. said hot artichoke dip. Hot artichoke dip. Oh, hot artichoke dip. Cheryl said barb barbacoa beef over rice with corn salsa with lime. Oh, that's what she's having for dinner. I'm Heck like, wow, yeah. that's... Wow. <laughs> It's a fancy you guys appetizer. You're rocking, Cheryl. Man, <laughs> I'm coming to your house on a Tuesday night. Terry likes pecan pies. All right. Okay, so the water is ready to go. So, what we're going to do, we've got the water. We're going to take that, we're going to strain out that garlic and just pour the water right into the mixture. Delta Dawn is playing on the Alexa. Yes, Delta Dawn, how exciting. Milford. We're listening to 70s and 7. Milford said two way tied. Cajun chicken, Cajun kicked up deviled eggs with habanero cheese and habanero cheese balls. Wow. Eggnog cheesecake, pecan pie surprise. Oh, chocolate ah. southern, chocolate southern comfort base. Used to make chocolate pecan pies. I every used once to make a chocolate pecan pie. Okay, so I've got everything in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm mixing it all up together, and I'm seeing what the consistency is before I put the rest of these breadcrumbs in here. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need them, but I just want to make sure. How do I roll meatballs and hold the dog at the same time? I don't know. Triple duty. <laughs> Holly's doing triple duty. All right. So I'm going to put the rest of the breadcrumbs in there. I just like to make sure I don't want them too dry. So I wait, make sure we're good to go with that. And like, again, I can't stress enough. I really like that really spongy consistency in the meatballs. Um, and that comes from whipping the egg really hard and putting that garlic water in there. 
So this is what the consistency of the meatballs are going to look like. Just do a nice little roll to make sure that they're going to stick together. Looks pretty good. Um, and on the cocktail meatballs, so if I was doing meatballs for uh, a dinner, you know, spaghetti meatballs or something like that, I would make them a little bit bigger. But for the cocktail meatballs, um, you know, like an ounce. And that even might be a little too big. So, but I think, again, however you want to do it. If you want them smaller, you can do them smaller. If you want gigantic, big one meatball and cook, cut it in half, you can do that. So, nice consistency. Um, I preheated the oven to 375, and we're going to put those in there when they're ready to go for about 25 minutes. Um, the other thing that you could do if you wanted to, um, is you can cook the meatballs in a sauce. So I wouldn't suggest it uh, in the barbecue chutney sauce that we're going to do, just because that's going to be a little hard, a little uh, sticky uh, in, in a crock pot, or just cooking it in that sauce. But you definitely can cook them in a sauce. Um, so if you don't want to put them in the oven and you just want to cook them up in a sauce, you can do that. Amy said she's going to try that garlic water next time. It's, it makes so much difference in the consistency of it. Um, so then what I'm going to do, there are so many variations. I think everybody knows about the cocktail meatballs with the grape jelly. Um, that's what I grew up on when I was younger. Everybody did those. So I have like a bunch of different twists on that. I am a huge mango chutney fan. I love mango chutney. So what I'm doing with these meat, meatballs is so simple. Um, I used to make, or, or I do sometimes still make mango chutney, but you don't, it's the holidays, we don't always have time to do all that. So you can either buy just a regular mango chutney or the Major Gray's chutney, which is close to a mango chutney. So this is a, uh, it happens to be a 12 ounce jar, which is a cup and a half of what we need. And then I've got three quarters of a cup um, of, again, really simple Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. Um, one of the things that, another one of my favorites, and um, we'll do the barbecue sauce one day because it's one of my favorites, is a strawberry jalapeno barbecue sauce. So that's really nice to kick it up a little bit for the holidays too. But, um, so basically all we're doing is we're just going to mix the mango chutney with the barbecue sauce. I am going to grab a mold. Forgot to pull one out. Um, it, it's so simple, guys. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with it being simple sometimes. Uh, I'm all about cooking and, and, and making all kinds of fun recipes and doing that. But again, sometimes it's just nice to have it simple and it still tastes good. Again, you can kick it up, you can change it around, you can do another good thing is if you like uh, peach, peach preserves uh, with the barbecue sauce is a really good one too. So um, just uh, putting it all in here. This is the hard part of the recipe. We're just going to mix that up together, and then uh, mm, I like that smokiness. So you can put anything. You can add more garlic if you want. You can add uh, a little bit of cumin. You could add some smoked paprika to bring some of that smokiness out. Uh, you know, if you wanted it even more sweet, uh, you could throw some honey in there. So all kinds of fun things you can do with that. Uh, and again, if you uh, have any questions or you want some of these uh, uh, recipe ideas of the different sauces for your uh, holiday cocktail meatballs, shoot me an email, kathy at secondhelpings.org or message me on here or whatever, and I will, uh, I'll get back with you and send some of those out. So um, $5 feeds a family of four. Uh, what happens during a day in the life of a CJT student at Second Helpings. Um, so it's, again, it is so busy. 
with uh, CJT now that we've, we've uh, there's only four or five students in a class and half of their day is spent doing things on uh, Google Classroom. So they're only in the building for four hours now. So they can have an extremely busy day. They can go from uh, watching a lecture and, and learning about how to convert recipes to going in the kitchen and practicing their knife skills and, and dicing onions and potatoes and, and practicing all those cuts to maybe practicing um, some resume techniques, learning how to write it, mock interview skills, learning how to interview. Uh, all of that can happen uh, in a four-hour day in the life of a CJT student at Second Helpings. So uh, it's, it's amazing how much we can make happen and create in those days at Second Helpings. So, all right. Wow, that was fast. They're kind of big, and that's not all of it. All right. Holly is... Roll the meatballs extremely fast, yay. So we're gonna throw those in the oven. Uh, again, 375, we're gonna throw them in for about 25 minutes. So, 20, okay. All right. You guys ready to, any questions on any of that? Or I know I went through that sauce pretty fast, but um, it's really not, not too crazy. Okay. So now we're gonna move on to the cheese ball. Um, so a couple of substitutions we can do with this. Bacon and smoked Gouda cheese ball doesn't have to be bacon and smoked Gouda. Um, we can do smoked Gouda if you, if you don't want the bacon. Uh, you can put nuts on here instead of the bacon. So there's, a, a, again, different varieties on this we can do. Okay, so um, I grated. Uh, it's about a cup and a half of smoked Gouda, and what I did was I grated it uh, previously so you didn't have to stand here and watch me, and it's about six ounces. So it's about six ounces uh, of smoked Gouda. And if you want more, again, as always, if you like more smoked Gouda, put that in there. And then we're just using a uh, eight ounces of cream cheese. So if I can get it over here. And again, it's softened so it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, just left this out to soften. The trash can's not cooperating. Okay, so we've got the cream cheese. We're going to throw the gouda in. It's pretty soft. We're going to throw in a clove of garlic. Garlic press clean. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. Um, Might be toward here. the back. All right. Gonna do a little garlic in there. Um, little. Did you need a pepper grater? We're going to throw a little bit of pepper in here and uh, so a little bit of crushed red pepper, <clears throat> which I forgot to grab out. I thought I saw it over there. A little crushed red pepper. Uh, not a whole lot, but if you want to kick it up, go ahead. Put a little bit more. I'm just going to put a little in there. And... Um, I forgot to get minced chives. So you want to put your chives in there. If you don't have fresh chives, you can put some dried chives in there. So this is a really simple recipe. Um, another thing that I like to do is you can even grate a red onion or put a little bit of grated onion in there uh, if, you, if you like that. I like that. But I like the fresh grated onion. You could always put onion powder in there if you wanted to, but... Um, I like the fresh grated onion a little bit better on that. Um, Emily said, while we're talking cheese, what are your favorite items for a charcuterie plate? Oh, wow. That's so hard, Emily. Um, I like, um, let me think, let me think. I'm a big blue cheese fan, so I like blue cheese on there. I like, um, I like apple coal. 
Um, I like uh, prosciutto. I mean, it's kind of the standards. I love prosciutto. Um, a nice uh, smoked mozzarella is good on there. And then cornichons. Cornichons. Um, olives. Um, mustard. I like a stone, a sweet and spicy stone ground mustard. I like that. I like that a lot. But um, uh, brisola, a lot of places don't, it's hard to find brisola. So I like that on a charcuterie plate when I can find it. Um, wow, that's a tough question because I, there's not many cheeses or meats that I don't like. So. Um, Another thing that you could do with this cheese ball, uh, again, this is pretty simple, uh, is I, you could serve it also with a mango chutney, or if you really wanted to uh, do some, because I, I love smoked Gouda and like an apricot, so you could even put uh, some dried apricots minced mm. up in there, or you could do like an apricot jam or something. So, mm, that sounds um, good. so again, super simple, but the flavors are really good. Um, and sometimes I'm a, I just like things to be really simple, to let the, the items kind of shine on their own. So um, another thing that will be really good in here, if you like to kick it up a little bit, you could put some um, diced jalapenos in there. Uh, what I would like to do is maybe roast them. Uh, so you've got a roasted jalapeno, uh, almost like a char. You could char it on the grill, and then you could put that on there. So, all right. So real simple, guys. Um, it's a little teeny guy. So again, make it bigger if you want. And we're just going to, I'm just going to form the ball. And this is going to be awesome. Bacon and smoked Gouda, I, I mean. Milford said, try it with green or red pepper jelly too. It makes the subtle flavors of the cheeses pop. That's a good idea, Milford. I like that. Okay, so I've got the cheese ball there. I really was poor planning on my part. I should have put the bacon. So I've got the bacon. Um, Normally I like my bacon not super crisp, but because we want this on the outside of the cheese ball, we want it to have that crunch like a nut. So I'm just gonna put that out. Uh, and this was about, uh, about 12 ounces of bacon. That's what I did. I need to, do you have more gloves on? Mm -hmm. All right. I can smell the meatballs. So can Bailey. I know. Got the dog helping now. So then, just gonna take the cheese ball and do a little roll in the bacon bits. And again, if you don't wanna use the bacon, you can use nuts. If you wanna do a combination of both, what I would do is I would put the bacon, a little bit of the bacon inside the cheese ball and then put your nuts on the outside. Or you could just go ahead and- uh, Bailey. Crush them both together. Oh, look, we've got help. So, <laughs> Bailey's deciding if, uh, if anything's worth eating or not. So, uh, probably could have used just a little less bacon, but man, it's bacon, so. And then what I would do, depending on, I like to chill this just a little. I don't want it super hard when I serve it, but I want it to have a little bit of the chill on it because again, we wanted that uh, Philadelphia cream cheese to soften a little bit before we started to mix it. So, uh, but yeah, and there we go. And uh, I would serve this with um, a variety of crackers. Uh, another fun thing uh, that you could do with this is maybe use some nice, really good quality dill pickle spears. You could kind of do that. And all of you that know me know the one thing that I will never suggest to go with this cheese ball is celery. <laughs> <laughs> no celery ever. Truth. But those of you that like it, 
Celery, why? carrots, yeah, those why? Are... <laughs> those of you that like it, why? I don't know. But, but those of you that like it, um, you could use celery, carrots, you could almost do a crudite, a veggie crudite with the, with this bacon cheese ball. You should pick ball. him up. He's not so, been on TV. I know. Huh? He's not been on TV. He's not been on TV? No. So. The newest one? This is the newest uh, member of the Jones clan. He said, look at that bacon. This is Guinness. Guinness Jones. So now he's made his debut. He's about six months old. So um, he says, wow, bacon. bacon. <laughs> he says what Mary Beth right. says. There's no such thing as too much bacon. No such thing. So now I'm going to wash my hands real quick. Um, all right. Okay, so those are the uh, the adventures for this evening. Five dollars feeds a family of four. Um, I'm gonna check on these meatballs. They've been in for about ten minutes, so um, they've got about another fifteen minutes, uh, ten or fifteen minutes to go. So uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys may have. I'm having a hard time getting in the trash can. Uh, so yeah, we talked about what, what kind of happens a, a day in the life of Second Helpings and how much we get accomplished there. We can't do it without you guys, man, all the volunteers, all the donors. It truly does not happen without you guys. Um, I am so thankful for all of you. Um, even in this, this crazy year, and we've all been grumpy and grouchy and wonder why. Um, I love to connect with all of you guys. It truly makes my day. Um, I love my job, you guys know that. It's truly my dream job. And uh, you know, it's been trying for all of us this year. But I am truly blessed to be able to, to talk with you guys and to see some of you and to communicate with all of you guys, however many ways. Um, Emily wants to know what your favorite part of the day is at Second Helpings. My favorite part of the day at Second Helpings, um, gosh, Emily, you got so such hard questions tonight. There are, I love the beginning of every shift. I think that's fun, you know, first thing in the morning, first thing in the afternoon. Uh, everybody's going and everybody's starting their day and, and, and kind of bustling around and putting things together and chopping and making sandwiches. Um, so that's a fun part of the day, I think, that getting everybody uh, going and, and on a project, that's always fun. Um, she said sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then... The, so an, another part, favorite part of my day, believe it or not, and um, all of my, uh, my co-workers will laugh at this, is the 810, because um, I get to, ah, some days I get to have a good time at the 810 and talk about the imaginary dodgeball team that I keep wanting to, to start. So uh, that's, that, that is fun for me some days at the 810. But no, I think the beginning of every shift is probably my favorite part. The same thing with the CJT students. It's always the beginning of, the, of their school day uh, to chat with them and see. So I think the beginning of every shift and every day is probably my favorite part. Terry said they've really enjoyed your cooking shows and Mary Beth said dodgeball. That's right, dodgeball. Um, I also, uh, just again, I'm going to throw this out there. I know development is very busy today, but there were quite a few people that made the comment on the post of our little mascot with his mask on that he needs a name. So, um, I'm, I'm just throwing out there that might be a fun project for February. I don't know. I mean... I'm just throwing it out there. So, um, but yeah, dodgeball, Mary Beth, you know, it's like, 
The other, uh, so I don't do this every week at the 810, um, but it was the best the very first time I did it, and, and nobody knew I was going to do it. It was actually after the 810. On Wednesdays, I always announce that it's hump day, and I don't just say it like that. I go full on hump day, and uh, the very first time I did that, um, the uh, a leadership team was in a, in a meeting, and um, Nora, who all of you know Nora, uh, came flying out <laughs> because she thought something was really wrong because I probably sounded like someone that had been hurt. So, um, it truly, Second Helpings is a blast. I mean, there's, uh, we do a lot of serious work, and uh, I'm so proud of all that work, but we have a, my, my whole motto is we're going to feed people and we're going to have a good time. And uh, I know that this year has been trying, but that's what we're going to do. So, um, yeah. Hey, do, Emily, do you have any more hard questions? Do you have any more hard questions for me tonight? Um, <laughs> ask her Emily a, is a math question. Huh? I said ask her a math oh, question. Oh, God, don't ask me a math question. <laughs> So Emily is great, a great addition to our team. I am so excited that she's here and she definitely makes uh, uh, all of this stuff a lot easier. So kudos, Emily, thank you. So, all right guys, uh, we're just letting the meatballs cook. Uh, I'm gonna let you guys go. You probably have more important things to do than sit here and, and watch me chat about the meatballs cooking. What's gonna happen, the meatballs are gonna come out I'm gonna throw them in a big bowl and I'm gonna to toss them with the sauce. And uh, again, if you wanna keep them in a warmer uh, chafing dish or whatever, yeah, put that sauce in there, put it all in there and it'll stay fine. You, you just wanna keep that heat low. Uh, if the higher the heat is, the stickier everything's gonna get. So keep the heat low and you can keep it in a chafing dish or uh, a crock pot on low or whatever. Emily said no more questions. Monica Birch said hello, and Emily said she's thrilled to be here. Hi, Monica. It's good to see you. So, uh, yeah, guys, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to shoot me an email, kathy at secondhelpings.org, or message me on Facebook or however. If you got my number, get a hold of me that way. Um, however, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, Thank you again. Happy Giving Tuesday. Thank you to everybody uh, for everything, uh, for your donations of money, time, food, everything. We can't do it without you guys. I truly love all of you. I mean that with all of my heart. I will be back next Thursday. Give me some ideas for baking. If not, you might just end up with the sugar cream pie. Thanks, guys. Love you.